I believe Father Len has been a priest for 35 years, and I've been a permanent deacon for 39 years, and I don't know how long Deacon Jean has been ordained. But I can tell you that none of us imagined, when the bishop was putting the chrism on us, that one day we would distribute communion in a parking lot, wearing plastic shields over our faces and latex gloves. But that's what we did the past few weeks. And the reason had everything in the world to do with the theme of this weekend's celebration, the solemnity of the body and blood of Christ. The second reading and the gospel passage for today's Mass from St. Paul's first letter to the Corinthians and from St. John's Gospel. Both call attention to this central idea of our Catholic faith, that Jesus is truly present in the bread and wine of the Eucharist, and that by consuming that bread and wine, his body and his blood, we become one with him and with each other. We become the mystical body of Christ, the church. St. Paul writes in that second reading, the cup of blessing that we bless, is it not a participation in the blood of Christ? The bread that we break, is it not a participation in the body of Christ? Because the loaf of bread is one, we, though many, are one body, for we all partake of the same loaf. And in St. John's Gospel, Jesus says, For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. And the first reading this weekend, which is from the book of Deuteronomy in the Hebrew Bible, adds a nuance to this idea. Moses is lecturing the Hebrew people who are nearing the end of their 40-year journey through the desert. He says, do not forget the Lord your God, who brought you out of Egypt, out of that place of slavery, who guided you through the vast and terrible desert with its seraph serpents and its scorpions, its parched and waterless land, who brought forth water for you from the flinty rock, and who fed you in the desert with manna, a food unknown to your fathers. There's been a lot of speculation over the years, over the centuries, really, about that mysterious food that Moses was talking about, that manna sent from heaven to feed the starving Hebrews. But whatever it was, Christian scholars have seen it as a foreshadowing of the Eucharist, with which God not only unites us in one body, but also nourishes us so that we have the strength to live out our faith. The discouraged Hebrews got new resolve from God's gift of manna, and we Christians get new vigor in our faith from the even greater gift of the Eucharist. There's a cynical little story that has been making the rounds for years, kind of an indictment of people who don't show outwardly uh, the proper respect for the Eucharist. According to this story, and I have no idea if it's true, a non-Catholic tells a priest, if I believed what you believe, if I truly believed that it is really God himself and not a symbol, I would fall on my face and be prostrate before it, before him. I would be so overcome with awe and worship. And I've never seen any Catholic show that kind of respect. Well, I don't get the impression from the Gospels that what Jesus was after was people falling on their faces, but rather people who want a relationship with him, a relationship that is based on intimacy and unconditional love. I'm not sure who gets to decide what respect looks like in this case, but to me, on a couple of sunny Sunday mornings, it looked like hundreds of cars and more hundreds of people coming to a parking lot where once again they would experience what they had missed, that communion with God and with each other.